All right, so I want to welcome everybody to the cloud feature. What's the cloud feature in Google Photos? My name is Richmond. I want to point something out. I did not get a chance to point this out yet in previous days because I did not get a chance to catch up. And now I am actually all caught up on iLearnReview.com. What's very cool is all of these classes are available online for free on iLearnReview.com once you get home. So if you have a lost anything, need to find something, need to find something else, it's just going to take you to a YouTube page, but they are all posted on there, everything's posted up until right now, on ilearnreview.com, which will take you to a YouTube page, all free works anywhere in the world, it's very, very cool, we've gone ahead and we've digitized everything, but I do actually have at the end of today's class, not the beginning of today's class, I do actually have this thing that people seem to like, but I'm the only one they like to keep it from, it's called paper. <laughs> I actually have some sheets of paper for both Google Photos and Gmail because I think they are that important. So I think they're that important that I've actually made some handouts for them. Now, as we saw in my favorite little short, well, one of my favorite little shorts, my favorite is actually the next one, that was called El Vender del Humo, or The Smoke Seller. Now, why was it called The Smoke Seller? Because generally, I know a lot of you in this audience have iPhones or iPads, and you take a couple pictures of your iPhone or iPad, and it says, your iCloud has run out of storage. Or if you have an Android device, you get an Android device, so, you know, and it doesn't have a huge amount of storage in it, most Android devices, so then it pops up, you need to get an SD card to delete your stuff because you've run out of storage. So the thing is, what takes more storage than anything else are photos and videos. And I can guarantee most of you in this room over the years have been, okay, I back up my photos and videos to something like a Dropbox, something like iCloud, something like that. And here's the thing, Dropbox, iCloud, different things like that were designed not for your photos and videos, they were designed for documents, they were designed for different things like that. But how we all got ourselves into a really deep hole is when iOS 9, iPhone, iPhone and iPad software OS 9 came out, in this little app, the Photos app right here, the Apple Photos app, when you open it up for the first time, there was a big button that said, do you want to allow photos to put all of your photos in iCloud? And there was a big button that said, use iCloud photo library. And there was a tiny little button that right underneath it that said, skip. So did we all hit the big button or the tiny button? The big one. If you hit the tiny one, you're in an okay state. You hit the big one, and that is why you're consistently running out of iCloud storage. That's the whole concept. Why are you consistently running out of iCloud storage? Now, here's the thing. iCloud does a lot of things very, very well. Gmail does a lot of things very, very well. What I'll give you an example is iCloud can synchronize all of your contacts. It can synchronize all of your contacts, all of your calendars, all of your Safari bookmarks, all of your news, all of your wallet, all of your passwords, everything like that across all of your devices, and it does that perfectly. The problem is when you start throwing photos and videos at it, how quickly can you fill up five gigs of space? Very, very quickly. So I'm going to show you in two seconds for all the iPhone and iPad people, all you need to do to reclaim that space after you get Google Photos set up is if you just go right into your iCloud settings, you click on Photos, there's going to be something right at the top called the iCloud Photo Library. Don't do this right now. Because what it needs to do is it needs to download all of your photos. So if you're not online, it's not going to download all your photos, and you're going to lose something. So you do this a couple weeks after you get on the Google Photos, Hit that iCloud photo library and you turn it off. And therefore, here's what's amusing. This is a big statement to make, but I'm probably writing this still. Everybody's contacts in this room can fit in five gigs of space. And when I say everybody's, I mean together can fit in five gigs of space. The reason you're killing your five gigs on iCloud, your two gigs on Dropbox, is photos and videos. So, we're going to talk about something first. We're going to talk about some theory, and then we're going to talk about different ways to back up your photos, and then we're going to go into Google Photos. But as of right this second, my phone is not back, my phone is not connected to the internet. So iCloud or anything like that is not an option. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a panoramic photo right now of this room. If you missed how to take a panoramic photo, it's on ilearnreview.com, the camera class. 
but I can go through. And I now have a panoramic photo. Now here's the question. Here's my panoramic photo. How many copies of that panoramic photo do I have right now? One copy. We all agree with that, right? Yeah. Now if I were to take that panoramic photo and I were to take it and put it on my laptop right there, how many copies would I now have? Two. Two. Now I'm not saying on the internet, I'm just dropping it. I put it on this other laptop, I have three. I put it on my iPad, I have four. I put it on my other iPhone, I have five. So we all agree I have five copies, but here's the question. How many backups do I have? None. Anybody say something other than none? One? Okay, so here's the important thing. I'm gonna tell you a story I have, this is a sad story. Every single day I have a crew member come to me and say, hey, I have this backup hard drive and it's not working anymore and my whole life is on it. This happened two nights ago, happened last night, happened the night before. Can you help me get my hard drive because I dropped it or anything like that? Here's the important thing. If something moves around, it's not a backup. Does that make sense? If something moves around, it's not a backup. So none of these things are backups because they all came up inside of this black bag in my pocket right here. So if something were to happen to me, guess where all of my content goes? So hopefully at home, you all have either a desktop computer or a laptop that acts like a desktop, correct? It stays in a single location. If you put your files on that machine, then that is a backup. I wanna make this very clear. All backups are copies, but not all copies are backups. So I'm gonna show you now, plugged into my laptop, I actually have a hard drive. Now I know what some of you are saying. That's a pretty small hard drive. But it's not the size of your hard drive, it's how you use it. Let's get that properly. <laughs> I'm a very skilled hard drive operator, and this is actually a, a big hard drive. This is a 512 gig portable hard drive. This is, when we're talking about the past, the present, and the future, this is the future of hard drives. Because here's the thing, if you had a backup, let's say you had a backup hard drive, one of the last things you would want to do with that backup hard drive is toss it across the stage. That's a rugged hard drive. It has no moving parts. It's a solid state drive. It's perfectly fine. That's the future of where we're going in hard drives. Thing is, it's still a little expensive, so I probably, I probably should put it on the shiny stage here. Shiny stage, to give you an idea. But here's the thing. Everything we actually care about, we need to have three backups of. Three things that stay in a single location. Do we need three backups of our iTunes movies and our iTunes photos and all those other things like that? No, because we can get those back, things, not photos, uh, iTunes movies, iTunes TV shows, we can go ahead and we can get those things back, so we don't really need a backup of those things. But what we really, really need a backup of is our photos and our videos. Now, the first company, long before iCloud, to offer unlimited backup of all of the photos and videos was a company called Flickr. It essentially wasn't unlimited, but it was a terabyte, and that was years ago when the phones had eight megapixel and four megapixel cameras, and they offered you essentially unlimited backup across all of your devices. F-L-I, I don't even think I have Flickr installed anymore. I don't have Flickr installed anymore because they got rid of the unlimited backup a few years ago because their parent company, which is now failing, and we'll talk about in the next class. Anyone know who owns Flickr? Yahoo owns Flickr. Their parent company could no longer afford it. Parent company could no longer afford being able to allow backing up everything for free. Now the next company to come around and allow you to back up all your photos and videos for essentially free, I'll explain why essentially is the word, is Amazon. They created an app called Prime Photos, and if you are a Prime member, it will back up all of your photos and all of your videos to the Amazon cloud for free-ish. Because you're still paying $99 a year for Prime, so we're not gonna go ahead and call it free, we're gonna call it free-ish. So that was what Prime Photos would do. It would back this up, and I have all of my pictures from across all of my devices backed up for free. Now, here's where things start to get interesting. Google used to have a program called Picasa. Have you ever heard of Picasa before? Yeah. They had a program called Picasa. Picasa went bye-bye about two years ago. When Picasa went bye-bye, they created something called Picasa for Web. And Picasa for Web didn't have what's called the stickiness. 
people didn't go back to it. What I'm going to show you today is Picasa for web. It has been renamed Google Photos to give you a bit more of a branding perspective so you know it's from Google. This is the only five-star rated perfect application ever on the App Store. I'm not making this up. Look it up yourself. You will see perfect five stars on iPhone, perfect five stars on Android. If you have an Android phone that came out in the last two years or so, you will automatically have Google Photos installed on your device. But what I want to show you, I'm going to switch over to my iPad. What I want to show you, I want to show you how to install Google Photos on an iPad or an iPhone. Now, what I have right now is this is an empty iPad. When I mean an empty iPad, this is my work iPad. This has none of my photos, none of my videos, nothing on it. And I'm going to go into the App Store, the big capital letter A, and I'm going to download the application Google Photos. Here's the important thing. The App Store now has ads inside of it because Apple's trying to compete with Google. This first application that shows up is not Google Photos. It says ad. But here's the thing. When you have the number one application ever made, do you think people buy ads against that application? People are searching for Google Photos. They're going to buy ads. So if you see an ad, you just want to make sure you get the second one, which says Google Photos. It is a free application. While you are there getting Google Photos, you might as well pick up the one next door as well, which is called Google Drive. Have any of you ever used Dropbox before? Google Drive works just like Dropbox. All of the people from the Dropbox team left Dropbox, went over and made Google Drive, but instead of two gigs for free, they give you 15 gigs for free. And all of your pictures will automatically be uploaded in Google Photos. So I've got the Google Photos application. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit open. So to get the Google Photos application on your Apple device, you're going to need your Apple password. But you're going to need your Apple password to get it, and then it's going to open it up, and it's going to tell you all about it, but don't worry, you don't need it to tell you all about it, because I'm going to tell you all about it. Now, here's the thing I'm going to tell you. You're about to see the only Google Photos class anywhere on the planet. I created it many, I mean, a year and a half ago. I created it about a year and a half ago. There's no Google source. No one else is going to teach you this. This is really cool. This is for the nerds. So, what's cool is there's a big ugly button that says get started, and then it's going to ask you a question that you're going to go, Huh? <laughs> Google Photos wants to access your photos. Yes. Why does it ask that? Yes. Lawyers. That's the right answer. So I can say, okay. Then it's going to say, Google Photos wants to do notifications. It wants to let you know when it's found something new in your photos, when it's backing up your photos, when it's finished your backup. You can say, okay. You can allow that. And then the next page is going to ask you to sign in with your Gmail account. Now, here's the thing. In this room right now, there's about 700 of you. Out of the 700 of you, I would be surprised if more than 200 of you have a Gmail account, and if more than 100 of those actively use their Gmail account. Coming this summer, and this is what we're talking about in the next class, there will be no other options. AOL is going out of business. Yahoo's going out of business, and Hotmail's going to a paid service. So if you have anything else, now don't go around and say these companies didn't tell me they're going out of business and they're going to a paid service. Do you know why? Because they did. It's in the terms and conditions that you never read. <laughs> and then it says, do you agree? And then it says again, are you sure you agree? Right in there it says AOL, Yahoo, and Hotmail, and you know, well, honestly, can close at any time without telling you or anything like that. Here's the thing to understand. Google is the number two company in the world. Apple is the number one company in the world in terms of market cap. So if you don't yet have a Gmail account, you can make one right from here. But our next course we do in this room is going to be about making a Gmail account, moving your contacts over, moving your old email over, moving your old receipts over, moving your old folders over, everything like that. So we're going to make, a, we're going to sign in with our Gmail account. How many of us already have a Gmail account? Let's see. How many of us actively use that Gmail account? Okay, yeah, that's the problem. I know that number is about dead on. I, my mom, I set her up a Gmail account. I said, use it, use it, use it. She calls me. She goes, my email's not working. I go, which one? Your Gmail or your AOL? She goes, my AOL? Click. Hang up the phone. <laughs> it's the honest truth. She goes, I go, click. Hang up the phone. I go, mom, call me back if you have a problem with your Gmail. She never called me with a problem with Gmail. But that's the story for the next time. So we're going to set up with our Gmail account. And what we're going to choose is we are going to, it's going to say, automatically back up all of my photos and videos to this Gmail account. 
Now, the first question that's not a dumb question is right underneath it. It says, do you want to use cellular data to back up all of your stuff to your Gmail account? Now, here's the fun thing. Most of you in this room are shaking your head and you're saying, no. You're saying no. But you know what I say for me? If you still have unlimited data, like I do, including unlimited data roaming with T-Mobile, my mentality is watch it burn. What I mean by that, a lot of people think I'm crazy, and I hope I get to another class after Gmail. If I do another class after the Gmail class in the last two C days, I'm going to explain to you why in five to seven years, cell phone carriers won't exist anymore. If you have any money in Comcast or, or Verizon or AT&T or T-Mobile or Sprint, get out now. Cell phone companies are in a race to the bottom now, and when they're race to the bottom, everything is going to absolutely implode. But that's a story for another day. So the thing is, I used 175 gigs of roaming data last year backing up my photos. Because I have T-Mobile. And they give you free data roaming, US T-Mobile. They give you free data roaming all over Europe at 4G speeds last year. So I backed up 175 gigs. Now, if you were doing that with any other provider, you would have to mortgage this ship. That's going to be completely honest. You have to mortgage this ship here. It's great because I have T-Mobile service, uh, not at sea, but in all the ports that have T-Mobile service, I get unlimited data, unlimited texting for, well, not free, but it's part of my plan. The great thing is I can get T-Mobile service all over the world, except in the United States. <laughs> but that's it. I'm never in the United States, so that's okay. So I do use cellular data to back it up. If you're using it on an iPad that does not have cellular data, then don't worry about it. The last question I was going to ask you is going to say, what size do you want to back up your photos and videos? There are two choices, high quality and original, and then there's a little tiny button here, it's a little fuzzy that says, get help deciding. Who wants to read that? That's like the terms and conditions. The right answer is high quality. We want to back up all of our photos and videos high quality. We'll back up your photos up to 16 megapixels in size and your video up to full HD. So if you have 4K video, it's just going to crunch it down to full HD. If you have a photo that's 20 megapixels, it's going to crunch it down to 16 megapixels. Up until this exact point in time when I hit continue, this iPad is empty. It has none of my pictures, none of my videos, nothing like that on it. I have loaded Google Photos, and in about 25 to 30 seconds, all of my pictures from across all of my devices will be accessible from my iPad streaming. What I mean by streaming is it's not going to take up your space. So my mom sent me this picture last night because I told her I have Google Photos class. This is our duck toller that she just got. His name is Tyler the Toller. I'm waiting for him to clear up. There we go. There's a, give it a few seconds. It'll sharpen. You see it on the side screens. That's Tyler the Toller. Uh, he's a puppy and he's destructive, but she's like, he looks guilty in that picture. But I have all of these pictures of Tyler the Toller. Now these pictures were not on my iPad. These pictures I'm just noticing as I'm talking were taken the wrong way. <laughs> I didn't take them. I wasn't at home with Tyler the Toller, but uh, do you think my mom's going to get a talking to later tonight? <laughs> if I don't want her to get it, I just send it to her AOL account. But uh, <laughs> actually, no, I send it to her Gmail account. But here's, yeah, I send it to her Gmail account. Where's the money that you need to send me? I send it to your Gmail account, Mom. Oh, OK. Uh, I never checked that. So we've got this guy right here, and I just did something really dumb with my computer, but I've got all this going on right here on the screen. Now, here's the question. What you need to do is you need to install Google Photos on all of your devices. So you need to install it on your iPhone, on your iPad, on your Android phone, on all of your different devices that you happen to own. You're going to go ahead and install Google Photos. Now. Where I want to go to next is we are going to talk about how I use Google Photos on a normal basis, which is on my iPhone. So I generally use Google Photos on my iPhone. So I'm going to show you Google Photos on my iPhone in a couple of seconds time. Now this is the Google Photos website. This is available at photos.google.com, which is the Google Photos website. Let me just type in my password. Photos.google.com. Once you install this on your phone or you install this on your tablet, 
It is going to be on the website, photos.thebolt.com. You can get to your photos anywhere, anytime you like, just as if it was actually an email account. So just as if it was an email account, you go in, you go to photos.google.com, or you can just Google, Google Photos. I think that's a thing. Yeah, you Google, Google Photos, and it will show you what's going on. Give me just a couple seconds, because my Windows computer is acting up. Who would have guessed? <laughs> there we go. 20 more seconds here. And I'm gonna show you how it works on my iPhone. So my iPhone is my primary phone that I use for shooting my pictures and shooting my videos because as I said, the best camera you have is the one you always have with you. Okay, so the best camera you have is the one you always have with you. Now Google Photos on my iPad that I showed you right there was completely empty. But Google Photos on my iPhone is not only super important, but you'll notice it's actually probably where most of you have the phone app. What you'll notice is if you look at your phones, most of you in this bottom thing, you have the phone, the text message, the internet, and the music, right? You notice I have none of that there. I have my Google Photos, and I took that picture earlier in the class, and when I took that panoramic picture earlier in the class, that did not go ahead and upload yet. So what you'll notice is I have a little recycle sign on my Google Photos right there. Now, all of these pictures are actually natively on my phone. So this is from our safari we did the other day. This is from the camera class. Remember my friend in the front row? Where is he? There he is. That's from the camera class right there. But these are all available across all of my devices. Google Photos will show you the newest pictures and videos at the top and the oldest pictures and videos at the bottom. Now, Apple shows you the newest at the bottom and the oldest at the top. What if you wanted in Google Photos to put the newest at the bottom? Tough. This is how it is. So, I want you to understand that once you download Google Photos, it is going to take a long time to upload all your photos and videos. The United States, can, can, the United States essentially invented the internet, but has some of the highest priced, slowest internet speeds in the world. I have a friend who's from a country, I'll tell you the country in a minute. He pays $10 a month for his cell phone, his cable TV, and unlimited phone and unlimited internet at home, and it's 50 times faster than what we have in the United States. The number one internet country in the world is Romania. Who got that? Yeah, Romania is the number one internet country in the world, believe it or not. Romania, because uh, Dracula likes to browse Facebook, so uh, <laughs> he stalks Facebook during the day and he goes out at night. Now you notice that had that little recycle sign on it, but now it has been backed up. Here's the thing, how many of you run out of storage space on your 16 gig device or your 8 gig device or it's popped up and it says, there's no more space on your device? One of the really cool things Google Photos will allow you to do is actually free up the space on your device. So you see these little three bars in the upper left hand corner? If I click right there, there's a little button that says free up space. It is going to find items that are already backed up. I've already got 6,549 photos and videos that have already been safely backed up to my Google Photos library at the quality I've selected, which is high quality. Good. So you will be able to still view them here at any time as long as you have an internet connection of some sort. So on your phone, if you keep them on your phone, even if you don't have an internet connection, you can view them. But if you go to a new device and you're not online, you can't see your pictures. Much like you can't see your email if you go to a new device. It will keep a cache Maybe a lot of the recent ones, but you won't see any new ones if you're going there. And if I wanted to, I could hit remove. What that would do then is on an Android phone, it would directly move them, remove them. On an iPhone, it would send them to the trash. That does not mean it removes them. It means it sends them to the trash. I'm going to see if I have anything in my trash. So if I go into my trash, in my Photos application, my Apple Photos application, I'll have a trash file called Recently Deleted. Let me go ahead and recently delete something. Let's take that bad picture of the polar there. And what I have is inside of my trash, I have one picture. That picture will not erase for 30 days. So it won't erase for 30 days, so you won't get the storage space back for 30 days unless you go in the trash, you hit select, and you say delete all. So you have to go in on your iPhone, your iPad, into the garbage can that's in the Apple Photos app and delete them or you won't get any space back. 
The nicest thing is, if you go, you get a new phone, you download Google Photos on the new phone, boom, you have all of your pictures. Here's one of the best things about Google Photos. It removes your switching costs. Now, what's switching costs? You've probably never heard of switching costs. How many of you use your email from your local cable provider? Let's be honest for a second. They love that fact. Because it means if a competitor comes into the area, you're not going to switch to that competitor because you're already tied into their email. Does that make sense? A lot of reasons people won't go from an iPhone to an Android phone. I'm not recommending you do this, but I'm making a statement. A lot of, reason, a lot of the reasons people don't go from an iPhone to an Android phone is something called iCloud blocking. You can't use iCloud on an Android phone. You can use Google Photos on an iPhone, on an iPad, on an Android phone, on a Windows computer, and on a Mac. Now that covers almost everyone in this room except for the three Canadians that still have Blackberries. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's true. <laughs> Watch this. Anybody not from Canada still on a Blackberry? Okay, good. Uh, so, I've proven, proven my point. So it is going to take a long time to upload your photos and videos. Now it's going to upload all of your photos first, then your special photos, be it panoramas, be it first, and then videos. My Google Photos still has 13 videos left to update because I have some of my classes in my phone and it's still uploading those. It is going to take, for every thousand pictures you have on your device, it's going to take about a day to back them up. This is just, this is not the nature of Google Photos, this is just the nature of how things work. It's going to take about a day to back up those pictures. But, here's the thing, some of us will have pictures that are um, a little bit uh, different, they're, they're not digital. You'll have pictures like this sexy picture right here. That's me as a child. So I've got myself as a child, and what I'm going to show you is Google Photos actually made an app which works inside of Google Photos. And I want to show you this app that works inside of Google Photos. It's called PhotoScan. It's called PhotoScan by Google Photos. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to scan in pictures into Google Photos, which is really, really cool if things want to behave with me right now. <laughs> okay, here we go. So it's called PhotoScan. Now it's right inside of the Google Photos app. If you click right there, on the bottom it'll say Other Google Apps. And it says, Photo scan right down there. So what photo scan will allow me to do is it will allow me to digitize this photo. It's really cool. You can digitize any photo. So I just open that. Now I want to show you what would happen if I took this picture on its own. So I've got this picture on its own, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a picture of it. Aww. I'm taking it the wrong way because the photo's taken in that way. And that picture, eh, it's okay. Let's try that again. I want to make it look a little bit worse. There we go. We got the stage lighting, we got all that, that's how we would normally take a picture. Now there's a really cool application called PhotoScan, it's part of Google Photos. And what it allows you to do is it takes five pictures of a photo and scans in that photo. And it's really quick. So I'm just moving my camera. And it's lighting the photo, but since you have five photos, it can actually combine it together and remove the glare from the photo. And you can scan in a physical photo. It looks a little weird on the screen, but you can scan in a physical photo and make it a digital photo with no artifacting, no light. It's going to show a little weird on the screen, but on my screen, I'll show the front row. It's actually a perfect digital copy of the photo. And then there's a button right inside of this app that we say, save all. And then they all go into my Google Photos. So you need to install Google Photos on all of your devices, on your iPhones, on your iPads, on your Androids, and then you need to install it on your computer. Now let me ask you a question. On your computer, are your photos and videos nice and organized and there's no duplicates or anything like that? It's a perfect library, right? Or is it what I call, I need to pause before I say this because I need to make sure I say it right, a Fuster cluck. <laughs> a fuster cluck. I can say that. I can't say it the other way around, but I can say it that way. Okay. So it's probably an absolute disaster. So if you go to photos.google.com, what you do is you go to photos.google.com. When you open this application, there's a button that says app downloads. 
and you're going to hit this little white button that says download. It's going to download an application to your computer, which when you open it, it's going to ask you a question that's going to say, hey, where are, well, first it's going to ask you to sign into your Google account. I'll give you an idea of what happens here. Let me uh, open up my Google Photos backup. It's going to ask you to sign into your Google account. I'm going to do this really quickly. We're going to... Okay, Richard at dot dot com, and then I'm not going to say my password out loud. One of the cool things in the last class, I have another sheet for the Gmail class, and people think I'm crazy. I put my email address on that sheet. Have any of you ever emailed me before? I actually do respond back scarily quickly because I'm usually answering emails on the toilet, but that's the question. <laughs> So if you get a crappy response, you know why. Uh, so, uh, so what's cool is I've got my pictures, and when I install this, what it's going to say is it's going to say, well, where are your pictures? Now, if you have an Apple device, they're likely in your Apple Photos library or in your, um, your, pho your Photos library and your pictures. And if you have a Windows computer, they're in my pictures, they're in Picasa. That's going to automatically identify where they are. And it will also ask you which size you want to upload them, when you want to upload them in high quality or original, and the right answer is high quality. So here's the thing. We've waited the month or so it takes to get all of our pictures and our videos up in the cloud. The question is, now what? So here's the cool thing. I have access right now on this laptop in front of the stage and on all of my devices to 574,000 photos and videos that I've taken before. The one thing I need to do is I need to go ahead and I need to name people. If you are anywhere, I'm going to be very careful with how I say this, if you are from anywhere other than the UK, you will be able to name people with facial recognition. In the UK, you are not allowed to do that due to some laws about internet privacy that they have. You cannot name people on the internet. Maybe Google will eventually get around those laws, but they do not offer facial recognition in the UK. Don't ask why. It says it's not available in some countries. So if you're talking about Google as a company and you need to describe it in one word what they do, what's the one word? Search. So imagine if you could search through all of your pictures. Google's eventual goal, this is going to sound scary but true, is to know what you want to search for before you know you even want to search for it. So it's looking through my pictures and it's actually recommending a search term. It is saying, search North Miami Beach. But if I scroll in a little bit, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, it's actually recommending North Miami Beach concerts, OGs, different things like that, and then you will see faces. There's my sister, there's myself, there's my mom, there's my other sister, there's my dad, there's my sister's friend, and there's my evil grandmother, which you'll learn about <laughs> another day. That one's evil, sorry. Uh, she doesn't have the internet, so she won't see this video. Uh, I can click in. And what I have is I have my people here. So these are all people that I've gone ahead and I've named before. I just need to go ahead and name them once. So if I go in, you're going to see all of these people. Let's let a person load, and I don't know who this person is. Let's load this person. And it's going to ask you a very simple question. Who's this? And if it's one of my ex-girlfriends, I'm going to pretend that I don't know who it is. Because that's a safer option. But I can go in and I can name who's this. And once I name someone, I can search for them over time. I've showed this demo before in this class, but I want to show you. I can type in Richard and Leslie, which is my sister, cruise, or no, ship, children. And it's going to search through 573,000 pictures and find me one photo. Richard and Leslie on a cruise ship as children. Boom. That is me and my sister on the Celebrity Century as children. Now, the other cool thing is if I wanted to find pictures of my other sister, her name is Julie. So I can go Richard and Julie. And it'll show me all the pictures of Richard and Julie. But here's what's really cool. I can get eerily specific. This is where it starts to get crazy. So I've got Richard and Julie, and it shows me all the pictures of Richard and Julie. But well, let's say I just want pictures of Richard and Julie in a specific location, because all of these phones and tablets nowadays have location information on them, so they know where they are. So I can type in Richard and Julie, New York. 
and it will give me just pictures of Richard and Julie in New York. Now I want you to understand, Richard and Julie contained Richard and Julie in New York. Does that make sense? So it contained Richard and Julie in New York, but I can get even more specific. If I want Richard and Julie in New York in the snow, then I get Richard and Julie in New York in the snow, and I get three pictures and a video. But let's say I just want the video of Richard and Julie in New York in the snow. I can type Richard and Julie in New York snow video, and I get a single video of me and my sister in New York in the snow. Google Photos has gone so far, it breaks down individual frames of a video to figure out who and what is in them. It analyzes videos like photos. I want to be very clear. All I ever told Google Photos is, oh, there's Richard and Julie in New York in the snow. All I ever told Google Photos is who Richard and Julie are. It figured out snow, it figured out New York, it figured out all of those different things on its own. My favorite, and uh, see there's me and my sister in New York in the snow, and this is when she's going to hit me with a snowball. <laughs> You've already seen a little bit of this clip, actually, during the camera class, but if I scroll, you should actually see me get hit in the face and say, oh, I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready. Boom. <laughs> But I can even look, my favorite animal is, now I've never told any of this, uh, my favorite animal is the penguin. I take a lot of pictures of penguins. So I can type in penguin, and I get all of my pictures of penguins that I've ever gone ahead and taken. This is from across all of my devices, from anything I have on my computer and in my, in my document folder, so a lot of it's from cell phones, stuff like that. But if I want penguins in, so this is penguins in SeaWorld. So this is me and a penguin, so I can type penguin, and Richard, oh, I just put two S's, oh, I've got it anyway. If I type in Penguin and Richard, it will find the pictures of Richard and the Penguin. Or I can type Penguin in Spain, and it'll find me pictures of a penguin in Tenerife in the Canary Islands in a place called Loro Park. So I've actually gone in and I can find all of my pictures and videos there. But what if I told you, remember Google Translate I've showed you a couple times? You can actually type in in different languages. This is fully integrated with all of the Google software. So I can type in in different languages, and believe it or not, Google Photos can actually read. So if I type in Richard, H-A-L-L-O-W-E-E-N, Richard Halloween Orlando, what is the day of Halloween? October 31st. October 31st. You'll notice that the day here is? September 26th, Google Photos is wrong, na 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 na. But it's not wrong. It found the word Halloween in a picture, read that, and automatically assigned that to Halloween. Not only found the word Halloween in the picture, but found that evil clown that's in the picture right behind the word Halloween, associated that evil clown with the word Halloween, and then the picture I took with the evil clown slightly after was automatically tagged with Fat Richard Man Boobs Halloween. <laughs> I just realized that. Fat Richard Man Boobs Halloween. You can see how that was old Fat Richard. Oh, look at that. Oh, so sexy. Um, okay. <laughs> it's a story for another time. But I can go in and I can look at things over time. I can look at things in all kinds of different perspectives. I can even look for my absolute favorite thing. I was sitting, I am not a fan of sushi. I do like the, uh, the lobster ramen that's at Sushi at Five, but I'm not a personal fan of sushi. I'm not sitting in Sushi at Five, this is where this, this class came to be. I'm sitting in Sushi at Five on this lovely reflection, talking to the team in Sushi at Five, and I'm like, ah, oh, I don't like sushi, it's nasty. And one of the girls looks at me, she goes, the stuff you eat's nasty. I go, what are you talking about? And I'm like, well, B-A-C-H, So I'm looking for my donut in West Palm Beach. This, my friends, is a Krispy Kreme bacon cheeseburger donut. <laughs> this goes to why Americans are fat. Because here's the thing, you very well could have taken a single Krispy Kreme donut, sliced it in half, and put the burger in the middle of it, because you could have, but you know why you need two full donuts? In engineering terms, we call it structural integrity. We need to make sure that bacon doesn't slide off. But I've got my Krispy Kreme bacon cheeseburger donut, 
to give you a little idea there, I can go in. Now, the other cool thing is, I looked, what I searched for is I searched for donut West Palm Beach, and I got my donut in West Palm Beach, but the cool thing is I can go ahead and I can look at all of the other pictures from that day, which I ate something that was a little bit nastier. It was called a pork parfait. Oh, no, it's fantastic. Just so, uh, this is actual proof that I ate the donut. That's fat Richard eating a donut. Uh, but I've got the pork parfait. Here is a pork parfait. Let me clear up just a second. Now, again, it's streaming the pictures, so there's a little bit of lag, but in a few seconds you go, boop, there we go. Doesn't that look delicious? Barbecue pork, barbecue sauce, and mashed potatoes. It's not that bad. It's not ice cream. It's mashed potatoes. It's okay. So I can go in and I've actually got my pork parfait right there. So I can go in and I can search anything. I can search in any language. This is tied into all of Google services. I can also take a single picture like the pork parfait and I can share it with people. So I can take it, I can share it, I can edit it. So if I hit share, I can actually type in an email address right from there. It will send that picture directly to their email. I can send hundreds of pictures in a fractional second to someone's email. Think about that for a second. Because they're all already uploading Google Photos. It's just sending a link. To show you how technically advanced Google Photos is, when you share a picture or share a video, it removes the location from it. So if you take it at home, people don't know where you live. Kind of just to show. And if I make a shared album, you could add pictures and you could add pictures and we could all have all of our pictures together. It is that integrated. I can even go in and I can edit it. So I can edit my photo. I have a full editing suite right inside of Google Photos. I have a full editing suite. I can even see the info on that photo, where it was taken, when it was taken, what it was taken with. So that was taken with an iPhone 5S in West Palm Beach on January 20th, 2014. Unfortunately, it doesn't say it, but I weighed 257 pounds at the time. So uh, that was when I stopped eating crap. Uh, now the last two things I want to show you is Google Photos can actually show you all of your pictures from a specific location. Since it knows locations, now as a crew member, I have been to St. Petersburg not one time, not two times, not three times, not four times, not five times. I've been to St. Petersburg about 20 times over the years. And what it's done is it's got all of my pictures from St. Petersburg. It's probably a very dangerous album to open. Uh, should have all, okay, stop, okay, St. Petersburg, oh, that's, no, I'm not opening that one. Uh, Stockholm. I've been to Stockholm multiple times. It's got all of my pictures of Stockholm in here and in order and everything like that. And I've got all of my pictures in Stockholm. This is in the museum for um, the vodka. What's the name of the vodka from Stockholm? Smirnoff. Smirnoff, yeah. That's from the Smirnoff Museum. But I can go through and I can look. The best barbecue ribs, uh, Texas barbecue ribs I ever had was in Stockholm. Uh, best barbecue ribs I had was in Stockholm. So I can look at my pictures based on where they are. And here's the coolest thing Google Photos does. This is a little bit advanced, but it can actually edit your photos and videos for you. Think about that for a second. So I'll give you an example. My assistant, she went to Rome, my old assistant. My new assistant had a surgery. Um, but, uh, bad. Didn't get any laughs on that joke, okay, fine. <laughs> she went to Rome, she took a whole bunch of random pictures. And it automatically stitched it together into a panorama it also automatically colorized part of the photo. So it's automatically added that color there. I'll give you another example. So I'm gonna show you some of these. These are called creations. This is something Google Photos will go ahead and do. These are called creations. It's gonna automatically make things with your pictures. So if you take a burst of pictures, it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna animate those bursts of pictures. So we can go ahead and we can see it's gone ahead and it's animated that. I'll give you, it made something called Summer of Smile, but there's one I want to show you. This is actually a production show on the Celebrity Reflection. I took a whole bunch of video of this production show with my Samsung phone. Now at the same time I took that video of the production show with my Samsung phone, my iPhone, uh, I took a picture of a light bulb that was out in the eye lounge. And it actually merged this all together. What you're about to see, the transitions, the audio, everything was done automatically by Google Photos. That's what's very cool. So it shows the audio, it shows everything. I'm going to give it just a second to load up because it is a super HD video because I decide that I wanted to take the super HD. There we go. I'm going to give it 30 seconds and I'm going to give it about 20 seconds to load up. So it's done this all fully automatically to give you an idea on what's going on. And it's also right in the cloud. I didn't do 
Swimming with the dolphins, and it's going, yay, savagery with the dolphins. I feel bad for those dolphins having to push me. Uh, but I'll tell you what's funny, we make fun fat Richard, we make fun fat mama. Me, my sister, and my mom, total, have lost close to 200 pounds. And one of the ways we did it is with tracking watches, with Apple watches and tracking our steps and different things like that. Now, here's the cool thing. So I've shown you just a bit of Google Photos. I want you to explore Google Photos on your own. The cool thing is they add new features to Google Photos weekly. And the cool thing, if you remember when I searched for the picture of Richard and Julie in New York in the snow, when I originally searched, there was only one picture. As I go on, there was more pictures. Now, here's the question I always get asked, and this is why I like to end this class. Why would Google offer this for free? Apple charges for it, why does Google offer it for free? Here's what I need you to understand about Google. I think this is very interesting, a lot of people don't understand. Apple, Samsung, all these other companies, they make money when you buy the device. Google is very similar to Amazon. I bet you don't know that Amazon sells almost every single Amazon Kindle at a loss. They make money when you use the device, when you buy a book, when you use the device. Google with Google Photos, Google made Google Photos because you're telling it more about the world around you. So I will give you an example. Let's say I took a picture in New York with a normal camera and you took a similar picture with your phone. It can use the data from your phone to figure out that that picture of mine is in New York anonymously. I will never see your pictures, but their artificial intelligence learns more. Remember those street view cameras that were going around and taking pictures in front of people's houses? What Google is doing is it's using you as their cameramen to figure out more about the world. And you're making Google's artificial intelligence even better. And in return for doing that, they're willing to give you free photo and video storage. Now here's the thing. If I didn't trust it, if I didn't think it was secure, would I be keeping 500,000 of my own photos on there? No. Would I be telling a whole theater full of people about it? No. I'm not one that would do something like that. So here's the real reality. I believe it's safe, I believe it's very simple, very easy. I've been using it for about two or three years. I've been using it since the second day it came out, to be honest with you. I'm using it for about two or three years, and I think it's finally ready in the last year or so for normal people, non-techie people. <laughs> it's meant for nerds, because here's the thing. Before you stepped in this room, before you spoke to me, how many of you have ever heard of Google Photos before? Okay, how many of you used it? Okay, that's a much, but how many of you knew it did all this? Okay, good. We've got a couple of new, but you might have sailed with me before, or you might have seen the video, because they're, they're not targeting it towards normal people yet. The first time there was an ad that I showed you, the Happier Holidays ad that I showed you today, that showed before the Star Wars film, the new Star Wars film that came out, Rogue One. So it's a growing, evolving thing. Now we have one more thing with Google Photos we're going to be doing tonight in the entertainment court. That's right outside of the theater after the first show. It's called the uh, Photo Scavenger Hunt. The way it works is I'm going to pick something such as, let me pick something that's not there, something such as a watch. I know there's not a watch there, because I mean, it's scavenger hunt. And what you have to do is you need to find a photo of a watch in your camera roll. And the first person to find it wins the prize. We have 16 rounds of different things, and they get increasingly more difficult. It's going to be a game show along with the activities team. I'm going to be hosting it. It's going to be at 8 o'clock tonight outside. Tomorrow, if you do have, unfortunately after this class, I don't have a lot of time for questions and things like that, but tomorrow morning at 10.30, so slightly after this class would have started, we don't have a class tomorrow, we have a class the next day, tomorrow morning at 10.30 in the Cellar Masters, I'm going to be there for about an hour if you have any questions. It is not a formal class, so it's not a class, but if you have any questions, we're just going to gather around a big table in Cellar Masters and we'll, we'll talk tech for an hour. Any questions you have, I'll bring my iPhone, my iPad, my Mac. But the next day, which is Lisbon morning, so the morning of Lisbon, we don't get into Lisbon until 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we are talking about Gmail. We're talking about how to properly use Gmail. What I mean by properly use Gmail, how many of you use that little blue mail app that comes on your iPhone to get your Gmail? That's the wrong way to do it. I'm going to show you how to properly use Gmail. I'm going to tell you, I get hundreds of emails a day, but I only get two or three I care about. Gmail actually sorts the two or three I care about automatically and only shows me the ones I care about. I get rid of my spam, I get almost no junk email. 
I know there's at least 20 of you in this room that have more than 10,000 unread emails. We need to solve that problem. But the most important thing I want to let you know, and this is honestly why I do this email class, AOL and Yahoo are done. Whether you believe me in this or not, they will be shutting down this summer and going to a new company called Oath.com. You can look it up by going to Oath.com. And it says that Oath.com can be a combination of Huffington Post and Yahoo Finance and all that. But you know what they don't mention anywhere? Email. AOL and Yahoo email, finished. If you don't get your contacts and your old email and stuff out of AOL and Yahoo before uh, it's finished, guess what happens to them? Hotmail? It's no longer called Hotmail, is it? It's called Outlook.com. Do companies change their name when they're doing good things? So I'm going to talk about why you need to get a Gmail account, how to move things over, everything like that. That is going to be in here, not tomorrow, but Lisbon morning at 10.15. For Google Photos today, that's it. I have some sheets that are going to get up on the front. I hope you enjoy it. What's the class? Did you get the book? Oh.